Mafia 3 is an open world action game with a ton of flavor. New Bordeaux is one of the best recreations of New Orleans in a video game to date, and it provides great insight into the Southern Vietnam War era culture of the times. Lincoln Clay's Revenge Tale is engaging from start to finish, but repetitive gameplay and irritating bugs hold this game back from achieving its full potential. Hey guys, JV here sharing my review of Mafia 3. My playthrough clocked in at 22 hours on PC and I spent most of my time playing through the story. Let's get started. The Mafia aesthetic and style sets this game apart from many other open world games, particularly Grand Theft Auto. Of course, that's a comparison that we expect because Grand Theft Auto is pretty much the pinnacle of the open world crime game. Where GTA is more of a jack of all trades, Mafia focuses more on the story and on the crime in the game, and particularly building up your crime family, whether it's with Lincoln Clay or Vito Scaletta in Mafia 2. For Mafia 3, this aesthetic style is built up through its city, New Bordeaux, which is a very, very carefully crafted reimagining of New Orleans. The presentation, the UI, the music, the revenge tale that builds up starting from the beginning, all of this contributes to the Mafia aesthetic, and as a result, they really have a unique feel with this game. This is not like a game that I played before. This is not a cookie cutter open world game. Also contributing to the style of this game is the superb writing. I mean, it's really on another level compared to a lot of games out there, especially if you talk about open world crime games. Mafia 3 is the gold standard now. Hangar 13 and 2K have crafted memorable characters, characters that I won't forget as I move on in playing video games. Characters like John Donovan, who is hilarious and very likable. Sal Marcano, who's easy to hate. Same thing with Georgie. And of course, Lincoln Clay, the anti-hero protagonist that everyone can relate to. You know, except for the fact that he's killed hundreds of mobsters. The best thing that Mafia 3's story did for me is make me care. I had an emotional investment in what happened, how Lincoln took down the Italian mob. I wanted to find out from start to finish. That was certainly helped by the documentary format in which this game was told. You've got the FBI agent talking about what's happening. You've got the FBI tapes where John Donovan is explaining what's happening, giving context to everything that Lincoln is doing. I thought that was a really great way to tell this story. At the same time, I was worried about the pacing of this game because of the underboss system and the fact that you could take out your targets in whichever order that you wanted to, depending on the districts. I was genuinely surprised because the game flows very well. In the random order that I chose, I didn't see any issues with the pacing, so I was really impressed by that, but I will say the middle is a tad slow. I think they could have added some kind of story mission in there to tie everything together, but other than that, the pacing was great. In between capturing districts, there were so many memorable story set pieces that really stand out to me as some of the most fun I had in this game, particularly the boxing ring, disguising yourself as a waiter and serving people, boarding the ferry to take out a capo, throwing a lieutenant from a hotel roof. There are some fantastic moments in this game that I won't forget. And in each of those moments, we had such a fitting piece of music. The soundtrack for this game is amazing. From the original score to the official soundtrack, this is some of the best music collected in a video game that I can remember. Anytime you can combine Credence Clearwater, The Rolling Stones, and Jimi Hendrix in a way that makes sense in this time period, it was just masterfully done. I'm really impressed with what they did with the music in this game. While you could hear all of this great music on the radio stations, you also had radio stations featuring commentary from a few characters throughout the city. So you had the black commentary from the black community from The Voice, which was interesting, and that was kind of contrasted with the white commentary from the white people in the city from Native Son and one of the main characters in the game, Remy Duval. Both of these radio stations comment on the world and give you their perspective of what Lincoln Clay is doing, and so it's really cool to hear that. I know other games have done that before, but it's particularly effective in this game. In New Bordeaux, each district has a different style and feel. The city is diverse, and this isn't something that I was expecting. I was expecting a different version of the French ward in each different district. For example, the Bayou Phantom, which is a swampy alligator infested area that you really don't want to be in, felt way different than downtown, which of course was civilized, you've got buildings, just the landscape of everything that was going on was way different. Barclay Mills is an example of an area that I did not expect in this game, where there's more industrial stuff, construction, things are more spread out, the people dress differently, it just had a different feel entirely. 
And that brings me to the attention to detail in this game, which really impressed me. Each racket, each district with its capo and lieutenant and everything, all the inner workings, that was all worked out by the writing of this game. For example, there's a guy named Tudix who you have to take out in the South Downs area in order to get to Tommy Marcano. You don't just learn surface level information about Tudix, you learn how he runs his nickel slot machine operation, who his informants are, who you can beat the information out of. Every single informant that you chase down has a name and has a little bit of a backstory, a little tidbit about what they're doing and why they're doing it. In the same way, there's a great diversity of beautiful cars. The cars in this game are fantastic. I'm not talking about the way they drive. I'm talking about the way they look and just the diversity, the variety of different cars you can find in this world. It feels like there's 50 to 100 different cars going around. The cars also depended on the area you were operating in. For example, Barclay Mills had more trucks, that makes sense. Whereas Tikva Harbor had an illegal car operation going on. They had a lot of nice, really fast cars. The attention to detail also really mattered in some of the most important, powerful moments in this game that included the way that the black community was treated in these times. And for example, we had no colored signs on some of the restaurants, people just shouting obscenities at Lincoln, just really horrific stuff that is blatantly honest. It's truthful for the time. And the honest portrayal of white discrimination in the South in 1968 in this game deserves recognition. The things Lincoln goes through in this game, the way he's treated is genuinely shocking. And you know what? It should be. So I take my hat off to Hangar 13 and 2K for tackling these issues and not shying away from them and not just making another Italian mafia because this one would have been too difficult to discuss because of, you know, the time period and what was going on. Video games tend to avoid this kind of stuff if they can, and that's not what happened here. They tackled it head on, and I think this piece of art should stand and be recognized for what it achieved. A big marketing point for this game was the underbosses, the fact that you could recruit these crime lords, team up, and have them help you take over the city. Cassandra, Thomas Burke, and Vito Scaletta were very well written, and their acting jobs were very believable. And something I failed to mention before, the motion capture in this game is fantastic. It is so good. If you just look at the lips, just look at the lips of people speaking in cutscenes. I've never seen this in video games before, but back on track. When the time came to make tough decisions, deciding which underboss would take which territory, and then either taking the benefits of that and foregoing the other ones, those were some powerful moments. And I really had to sit there for a few minutes and consider, do I want to piss off this person or do I want to go ahead and support this person? The tension was always there and it was kind of this outside force within the main story that kept things going, kept me on the edge of my seat. My experience was that I chose Cassandra and Vito Scaletta from the beginning. I really like what their upgrades offered, and I completely left Burke with nothing. The result was that Burke's attitude got worse and worse as we got down the line, and then about 15 hours in, he'd had enough, and that's when I had to take him out. But I was also impressed by the different attitudes of Cassandra and Vito based on their district control. Most of them were very mistrusting in the beginning, but as I gave out district control, their attitudes changed and they started acting like they like me. And by the end, Vito Scaletta was my best bud. I would call him up to secure a district later in the game and he would say, yeah, sure, no thing, because I'd given him territory before. And that was in stark contrast to what he said in the beginning of the game, which was, yeah, I'll take care of this racket, but if you don't give me the district, there's gonna be repercussions. Just the sheer possibility of having to kill off an underboss if you provoke them is a really compelling piece there because it brings you back. It reminds you that you are running a crime organization and if somebody doesn't get their fair cut when you ask them for help, they're going to be mad and you might have to take them out. Lincoln Clay's background as a war veteran and a member of a special forces unit gives plenty of explanation as to why he's able to take out so many mobsters. And Fortunately, as a result of that, we have some satisfying combat. It's really fun to kill mobsters in this game. You've got brutal takedowns. You can sneak around with a knife. Very solid gunplay. I enjoyed playing around with all the different types of weapons that I could pick up in the game. Of course, I could call my armored vehicle associate from Cassandra to get you know some new weapons if I wanted to test something else out. As far as third-person cover-based combat in an open-world game, this is pretty much exactly what you would expect it to be, but it's effective. I felt it was satisfying, and I never really got tired of shooting bad guys. Unfortunately, the core gameplay loop gets repetitive after you do the same thing for about the 10th time, and I think you do that same thing about 20 times over the entirety of the game. 
that's clearing districts the process of talking to some sort of informant getting some information about the area and then going around and clearing out the rackets of whatever crime organization is operating in that specific area the concept is fairly novel and it really made sense given what was happening in this story but doing the same thing over and over again no matter how great it is gets old after a while after the midway point of the game, clearing districts became the most boring part. It was so monotonous, and I found myself waiting for the story set pieces that were so great, and I also found myself rushing through these districts, searching for ways to cause as much damage as possible as quickly as possible. I just wanted to get through to what I enjoyed the most, which again were those story set pieces. As a result, the story dragged on for me. I was still engaged, but it felt like a movie that is 30 minutes too long, where you're wondering, okay, is this going to move on? Are we going to get to the next part? Is the plot going to move forward? Is this going to end soon? That's the feeling that I had, and I think that's a direct result of this repetitive gameplay. I think if they had more variety here, it wouldn't have felt like that. Something else that might contribute to that feeling is that we have an open world in New Bordeaux with no extracurricular activities. There's very little. There are about six side missions that you can participate in, but I think if there was more to do in this open world, it could have made it feel like less of a grind. This is kind of like a linear open world to me. I know that sounds contradictory, but the only thing open world in terms of this narrative is that you can take these districts down and kill these capos in a different order. However, that order does not matter. As long as you do them, you're going to end up at the same point. Because of that, I think this would have felt like less of a grind if there were more extracurricular interesting things to do out in this interesting world. They built a really interesting world. It's just that the majority of what you're doing involves the main storyline. What I also realized quickly, and I made a video on this on my channel, is that stealth using the knife and whistling for enemies was usually the best option in combat. Not always the best option, there were some incredible guns later in the game, but usually if you sneak up and stick a dagger in everyone that you possibly can without being seen, that is usually the best option in combat. We know Mafia 3 isn't a stealth game, and it shouldn't be treated like one. However, if one of the best options in combat is stealth, then it becomes that, and that's where you start to see the failings of the AI in this game. It is completely immersion breaking that more than a handful of times I was able to kill a bodyguard right in front of another bodyguard and him not even react to it. Another minor gripe of mine is the driving. It felt too slidey. I don't know any other word for it, but when you turn, the camera kind of swings out and you lose a perspective. And just overall, I ran into things far too often. And I know myself have been playing video games for a long time. I just don't run into stuff when I'm driving cars in video games that often unless I'm being wild on purpose. And so just the fact that I ran into other cars, telephone poles, anything that stopped me in my track far too often, especially when I was escaping the police, I would get stopped by something frustrated. It didn't seem like, oh, I ran into that. I was like, oh, I slid too much. What's going on here? I didn't have a right perspective. What happened? And so I understand that Mafia is trying to be a little bit unique with their driving. However, since you're doing so much of it, I think it just should have been intuitive. It should have made sense and should have been something that most people who've you know driven in a video game before know how to handle. Most open world games have a fast travel mechanic so you can get across their big world. And I can tell you right now that Mafia 3 has a large world. It's actually bigger than Fallout 4. And that's crazy to think about. I know in Fallout 4 you can't drive a car, so you're kind of comparing different things here. But if you walk across the world, Mafia 3 is actually bigger. And for that reason, I think we really needed a fast travel. It didn't bother me as much as I've seen it bother other reviewers that have talked about this game, but I think it would have made sense. There's no logical leap that you need to make for a fast travel in this game. Simply call a taxi or call an ally for a ride to get you from point A from point B. I would have waited to see that little car come down the driveway to pick me up and then bring me to my destination. I have no problem with that, but a GTA kind of taxi ride fast travel would have made a lot of sense here, and I think it would have taken out a lot of the frustration of you know taking forever to get from point a to point b some of the worst failings of this game come with the way that it runs and i played this on pc at the 60 fps cap setting in terms of graphics i think it's just poorly optimized it doesn't run as well as it should and i know that firsthand because i'm running it on a really new machine running a 1070 graphics card and i have it on high settings and this should be able to handle Mafia 3. It doesn't. For some reason, this game just doesn't run very well. 
I started to notice maybe five hours in that the cutscenes have some weird effects going on. When a character moves side to side, there's this weird kind of shader effect where the colors go kind of off. That's one thing I noticed. Also, the skies looked crazy at least 50% of the time. There was a weird effect going on looking like molten lava, and that really took away from the atmosphere of the game. Additionally, I would see random invisible barrels appear out of nowhere, random artifacts popping up on my screen. These things really take you away from the game. They take you out of the immersion, and it's really a shame because I think if this was a technically good game, it would have been a masterpiece. It would have been contending for game of the year in my eyes, but this poor optimization, the poor way that the game runs really took away from my experience, and it's not something that I'll forget when I look back on this game. If you buy into the aesthetic feel of a Mafia game and genuinely enjoy being in the shoes of Lincoln Clay and New Bordeaux, then Mafia 3 is a fantastic game. Where Grand Theft Auto is the undisputed benchmark for the open world crime game, Mafia 3 is a more story focused experience that shines because of its writing and its memorable performances. I really enjoy this game, and it's unfortunate to me that this game has been the victim of internet bandwagon hate, and I think that's because of critics very early on citing the repetitive gameplay as the worst part of this game. And I certainly agree with that, but I do not think that takes anything away from this narrative and the fact that this is a powerful piece of art, a powerful social commentary on white discrimination. It will be a long time until another studio captures the horrific level of detail of what was going on back in those times, and that is something that I greatly appreciate about this game. What is your good, bad, and ugly of Mafia 3? Share your thoughts on the game in the comments section below. I'm really interested to hear them because I know a lot of traditional media outlets had differing opinions compared to me. If you enjoyed this video, remember to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe for new videos every single day here on my channel. You can follow me on Twitter at JV2017 if you want to stay up to date on my videos. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time.